What's up, guys? This is Chris with BenAndBaseballCards.com. I, uh, when I posted my videos for the 2010's uh, Topps Factory sets yesterday, <clears throat> I, somebody mentioned about seeing the card room because I was in the card room at the time. So I went ahead and asked a question on that comment, on that reply, to everyone about possibly wanting to see a video of the card room. Uh, I really didn't think anybody actually cared to see the card room, but apparently uh, there was a good handful of people on there, probably a dozen people that, that actually thought it was a good idea. So this is the view that you guys are used to seeing right here. This is where I did my cards on my glass top desk with the white piece of paper that I put down. Well, <clears throat> now I'm going to show you how it usually looks when I make comments and videos. Now we're going to go into the card room. This room across the hall right here is basically all my shipping boxes now and my old empty card boxes. That's what those big boxes are down there is filled with those boxes. But here's where I keep all the shipping boxes. Any boxes that we have, I mean some of them are for my wife, some of them are for me. But that's all that's left in here is just boxes. I used to have cards sitting there. I used to have a big metal rack here. For anybody that's curious, this is the closet in here. You see all those boxes right there? That's all Hot Wheels and G.I. Joe. They're all relatively new, recent years. It's just stuff that I thought I'd be interested in, but ended up having to give it up to go uh, get into cards more seriously. Baseball cards specifically. So here's the office. We're coming out of here. Here's the new and improved card room. It's the same room. <clears throat> Everybody's used to seeing the rack up here. And there's the dog. Everybody knows what the rack looks like. So this should be review. That's my big box of packing peanuts. Some empty uh, card boxes that I still haven't used yet that I'll fill in on those gaps right there that are still empty. So now we turn to this wall here. My fan. <clears throat> We've got uh, many, many of these super monster boxes is what they're called. They're, they're basically 5,000 count boxes, but they only hold 5,000 if you have them unsleeved. When you start putting a bunch of them in sleeves, then it only holds about 4,000 per row, so they're only, or uh, 1,800 per row, I believe is what it is. Yeah, because then it would hold 4,000 cards instead of 5,000. So instead of 1,000 per row, they only hold 800 because of the width or the, the, the thickness of that many sleeves added into the thickness of the cards. <clears throat> this is one of the racks that was in that other empty room with the cardboard boxes I was just telling you about. Um, a lot of these are older cards that I have down there towards the bottom behind that tripod where the red and yellow score boxes are in the 07 tops. The rest of those boxes are maybe boxes I got from other people. I bought them, old collections, and just to be able to go through them and just remind myself of what cards were like back in the day. Some of the stuff towards the top I still actually have cards of. I'll show you these right here. So I actually busted this box open. This is, I believe it's 1983 Fleer stamps. But they're all connected, just like postage stamps are. You can't see it because the camera's not focused to it, but the lines between them are little tiny holes that <clears throat> are... Uh, they would have to be torn apart to be sold individually and I don't know right now at this moment if it's smarter to sell them as a whole sheet or cut them up with my paper cutter. I have a paper cutter over there by the Mountain Dew and the, and the water. So I could cut nice straight lines and make sure those holes are all even. It would take a while but I could do it. But I'm not sure if they'd be worth more to people still left in their entirety. Put this cards down right now. So here's the kind of like a backup rack that I have for oddball boxes that I still haven't gone through yet. This is the table that I filmed the uh, 2010 Tops Factory Sets video yesterday. I actually had the table pulled out a little more this way and had the camera sitting here so you guys could see the cards as I opened them. So from that perspective we'll move up to this other rack that I have. This is actually a bookshelf that was already in here that I had a few books on. You can see like six books. That's how much reading I do. I don't really read a lot. 
<clears throat> and four of those books have to do with baseball cards. The other two have to do with uh, computer stuff. I think one of them actually says inventing. But here's some supplies that I have. I'll get my chair out of the way. These are all top loaders. And that's, yes, that's a lot of top loaders. And they go from, they go in order from thickness. These are the super, super thin ones for absolutely one base thin card. And then you move into the premium ones that are the same thickness, but they're just a better quality. 55 point, 100 point, 130 point I got two rows of, and 180 point I have two rows of. This is where I uh, stick all my gigantic cards that I don't have room for in the card boxes. The Ginters and the Topps Heritage uh, panels. I have to stick them up here so they're protected. And I always keep them in the wrappers. Up here I've got some graded sleeves, team sleeve, team bags. All my little snaps that I bought previous to really knowing what I was going to do. I just wanted to make sure I had them on hand in case I needed them. This is a minor league ball game. A minor league ball from uh, AAA Round Rock. Round Rock Express, Houston Astros AAA baseball team. That's the minor league logo and the minor league official ball Pacific Coast League and signed by the commissioner of the Pacific Coast League Rawlings. But it's an actual game ball. I had one of my buddies get it for me. He worked up at the stadium there and we've been up to several of those games because it's not 20 minutes away maybe. 20-30 <clears throat> minutes away for us to go see a round rock game. Those right there and those those cards in those boxes are basically trammels from my trammel collection that I'm in the process of breaking down and trying to organize to where I can just factor all those cards back into their regular sets and sell them as if they were normal cards. Address labels. This is my own little customized box here. This is my customized sorting box. So I can sort cards by hundreds and then I can sort them by the, the double digits, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Either way, I just sort them by hundreds, take them all out, and then sort them by tens, take them all out, put them in order by hand. And it makes it way easier for me, and it's got a little bit of a tilt to the box, so they kind of slide in there. Postage slips for delivery confirmation and insurance and stuff. Little oddball cards I pulled out. Batteries for the camera. <coughs> Boxes behind the trash can. I got all big giant envelopes. I'm running out of the little envelopes that I send. <clears throat> boxes for when people order lots and lots of cards. Different size boxes. I actually had some of those boxes for Hot Wheels and G.I. Joe's so they're a little bigger and out of shape. and They're not sized for cards but I can still use them for other stuff. Bubble wrap. All the different kinds of padding that I have. Cardboard. Uh, let me show you how this thing works right here. This is something that I just kind of created. This piece of cardboard here. When you have cards, there aren't very many in the whole box. You put them on this rack and they all just keep falling over, over and over. They keep falling over. So I, I, I measured and measured and measured and probably tried it 20 different times. I came up with this piece of cardboard that's exactly three and three quarters of an inch from here to here. And it jams itself in. It wedges in so the cards can tip without falling over and they don't knock it over. It has to fit tight because if it fits too loose, eventually the cards will push the cardboard out of the way. So I had to keep trial and error with that thing, but that's just something that I came up with and I figured I could show you guys that. If somebody has the money to go patent it, by all means, go ahead. Just make sure you don't forget where you got the idea from, but that's that's how that works. Like I said, I've got my little, my little guillotine cutter here. It doesn't weigh very much. 